Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to join me in practice today. So for this practice, you will need a strap, but you don't have a quote-unquote official yoga strap. You can use a necktie, a long sleeve shirt, um, a belt even. Um, but definitely if you have a long sleeve shirt, I think that will be the best because it's usually fairly long. Um, then you will need one block. And this could also be a small stack of sturdy books or maybe just one bigger book or a footstool and a blanket. doesn't need to be an official yoga blanket. Any blanket will do as long as it's not too fluffy. So grab what you need, settle in, and we'll get started. So we'll start on our backs today. Go ahead and make your way down onto your back and rest in whatever position is most comfortable. This might mean that the legs extend out long, heels to the earth, or maybe you bend your knees, place your feet to the floor. You can even place your feet what mat width distance and then allow your knees to come together to touch. You can also bring the soles of your feet together and your knees wide if you are craving a bit of a hip opener here. Feel free to support yourself in any way you need. Maybe that means you bring your blanket beneath your head. Take a few moments to get comfortable, to get settled. Once you're there, go ahead, place your hands on your belly, beneath your belly button. Allow them to rest softly in this space. Start to take some nice, deep, full breaths. So on the inhale, actually feel your hands rise as your torso lifts. And with each exhale, you'll feel the hands fall back towards a more neutral position of the torso as the breath releases. Continue just like that. Nice, deep, full breaths. Breathing all the way through the entire torso. And notice already here if any thoughts arise. Observe, acknowledge the thoughts. And watch them float away. You can imagine your mind like the sky. There's all these clouds. You can attach a thought to each of these clouds and just as the sky does, the clouds continue to move and maybe, just maybe, you'll get to that clear cloudless sky of your mind. So in our practice today, I invite you to allow yourself to truly become aware of your body as you move and keep track, keep aware your awareness on your mind and notice where it wants to wander no judgment for whatever comes up no judgment for the thoughts that may arise or no judgments of the patterns of the clouds in your sky observe the subtle shifts that happen within you you lost sight of your breath here come back to those nice full deep breaths these deep breaths are going to help to ground you in your body start to get connected to your physical self in preparation for a practice today so this practice is a feel good gentle flow so there's nothing you have to do there's nothing you should be doing I really want you to focus on what feels good in your own body. As always, I am just a guide. You are the most knowledgeable person when it comes to what your body needs, what its limits are, and how far you want to go. The Jigar Gore reminds us that yoga is not about touching your toes. It's about what you learn on the way down. So what can your physical practice reveal to you today? What can your mind reveal to you as you move? 
allow these sensations, these feelings, these thoughts to rise up. Again, notice them without judgment. See if you can do your best to clear the sky. Allow all the clouds to float away until you notice this bright blue sky of your mind. Take a few more deep breaths. And slowly start to come into a more natural rhythm of breath. I encourage you to try to keep your breaths deep throughout practice. And know that if your breaths are becoming shortened or stagnant, that is a sign from your body to back off from where you are. You can release your hands by your sides. And then on an inhale, stretch your arms up over your head, stretch your legs out long. Take a really nourishing full body stretch. Let out any audible noises that may arise. The next time an exhale passes through your nostrils, release your arms to the floor beside you. Bend into both knees and place your feet to the floor. We're just going to start with some pelvic tilts. So this is going to be a very minor movement. So we'll start to tune into the body, tune into the hips, in particular the pelvis. So on your inhale, tilt, tilt your pelvis up. So you might notice your hips lift just slightly, your glutes lift just slightly. You're rounding the tailbone under. And as you exhale, tilt the pelvis down. So you might notice your low back lift as your hips, your pelvis kind of ground more into the earth. Continue just like that. Inhale, pelvis tilts up. Exhale, tilt the pelvis on down. Continue just like that to the rhythm of your own breath. And then there's no need to hurry. There's nothing you have to do here. This might feel sticky and awkward. You don't often get into the hips. Especially if you're newer to yoga, I think just getting into the body in general. A lot of the poses, the shapes that you know, teachers guide you to make seem and feel really weird. So let those feelings come up, feel those, acknowledge them. And do your best to let them just flow down by. As long as it feels good, as long as it doesn't hurt, you are in the right place. After that next exhale, so after that next pelvic tilt down, come back to neutral. Notice, feel, observe. And keep your knees as is. Make sure that pelvis is in a more neutral position so it's not tilted up or down. Something that feels neutral for you. If your low back is talking to you right now, you can even bring your feet wide and allow your knees to come together to touch in constructive rest. Try to keep your low body either in that constructive rest pose or in the same pose we were just in and lift your head slightly so that you can slide your hands behind your head. Interlace your fingers together, a little basket grab behind the head here. Elbows are out to the side and then release your head down to the floor. So your elbows draw out as close to the floor as they can get. On an inhale, draw your elbows up towards the sky, slightly together. And as you exhale, open them back out to the earth. So again, these really little movements. Inhale, draw the elbows up towards the sky so the elbows will go from pointing out to up. Exhale, release the elbows down. Continue just like that to the rhythm of your own breath. Head stays on the floor, really just moving the elbows. And you'll notice that by moving the elbows, we're also moving into the shoulder girdle. Just taking this movement, this fluid movement, just get connected, become aware of the body. And 
and slowly release your elbows back to the floor and then bring your arms down by your side pause check in with your shoulders And then if you were in that constructive rest position with your feet wide, bring them back about hips width distance apart. Knees stay bent, feet to the floor. As you inhale, draw your right knee in towards your chest. Flex your right foot so your right toes are going to point back towards your face. And cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh. Allow the right knee to open out towards the right. So we're in like a supine pigeon figure four position. Just start to take some gentle movements in the lower portion of your body. So sway the hips from right to left. Your legs will move along with it. Keep the shape. Keep that right foot flexed. And then come back to stillness in the center in that neutral position. An option to stay here. Or you can start to draw the legs in. So you can do this by bringing your right arm between that little triangle or in that little triangle you created between your legs. And your left hand can come to the outside of your thigh. Keep your head, neck, and shoulders on the earth. So if your hands don't quite grab and you want to make that connection, you can find your long sleeve t-shirt and use it as a strap to make that connection between your hands there's no need as long as your head neck shoulders can stay on the earth you don't have to have the hands bound keep the right toes flexed keep them active this is going to protect the knee if you have the legs drawn in on your next exhale release the left foot back to the floor Draw your right knee back in and grab around either your right thigh, right knee as you draw the knee closer towards your armpit. Extend the left leg out long. Left heel will press down into the earth. Option to take ankle rolls through that right ankle. I like to imagine I have a paintbrush on the tips of my toes and I'm making a circle big or small as you'd like through the ankle. Reverse the direction. And then come back, right knee to center. And then release the right foot down to the floor. Knee is bent. Bend back into your left knee, place your left foot on the floor. We'll switch to figure four other side. So the left knee will draw in, flex that left foot, cross your left ankle on top of your right thigh. Allow that left knee to open out towards the left. We'll take the exploratory movement first. Start to move a bit from right to left. Hopefully should feel pretty good. Come on back to center. An option to stay or to draw your knees a bit closer in for your supine pigeon. Same options as before. Use your strap. We're going to call all those things that I mentioned earlier, the necktie or the long sleeve shirt or your official yoga strap, quote unquote, a strap. So if I ever refer to that in this practice, that's what I'm talking about. Next, exhale, release your right foot to the floor. Keep your knee bent. Hug your left knee into your chest. Keep the left knee drawn in. Draw it out closer towards your left armpit. Extend your right leg out long. Press your right heel down into the earth. Option to take those ankle rolls through the left ankle. Go ahead, reverse the direction of your rolls. And 
and then draw the left knee back. Release your left foot to the floor. Bend your right knee, place it to the floor. And then on your next inhale, draw both knees into your chest. Grab hold of your thighs, your knees, your shins, or nothing at all. And start to rock and move from side to side. Make little circles on your low back. Do what feels good here. Again, yoga is not about touching your toes. It's about what you learn on the way down. It's about what you learn on the floor. It's about what you learn in a comfortable seat. So really take this practice just to feel good. So hopefully these, this exploratory movement on your low back feels good. You even rock all the way over onto the sides of your hips if that feels good. And then come back to stillness. We'll come up into a seat so you have the option to roll over onto one side. Take a few moments of breath there and then come up into a seat in your own time. Or you can rock and roll the length of your spine a few times and come up to a seat that way. You do what feels best for you. Now, whenever you make your way to your seat, you have a few options here. So you have a blanket with you. So you can place that blanket beneath your seat and sit with your ankles crossed, your legs out long. You can also just sit flat on the earth. Once you're in your comfortable seat, rest your palms down on your thighs. Close the eyes if that's comfortable for you. And observe your inner scenery. What's happening in the sky of your mind? What do the weather patterns reflect? Option to keep eyes open or closed here. On your inhale, shrug your shoulders up to your ears. And as you exhale, open your mouth, release with a sigh. <sighs> inhale, lift your shoulders up. Exhale. <sighs> One more inhale. And exhale. <sighs> We'll take the shoulders and roll them forward a few times. And then roll them to the back. Let's see if you can find a more neutral position of the shoulders. Relax them down away from your ears. And root down through your sits bones and find length up through your spine, up towards the crown of your head. Check in with the rib cage. You can even place one hand on the front of your rib and one hand on the back. And try to find your rib cage to be over your pelvis. You don't want the ribs jutting forward. You don't want to lean back. So somewhere in that neutral position. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, turn your head to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, turn your head to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, head turns to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, head turns to the right. So you inhale, come back to center. Draw your chin down towards your chest. Take an inhale here. Exhale, roll your head over towards the left shoulder. Inhale, come back to center. And exhale, switch. Start to move nice and slow from side to side. Option to pause on one side for a few rounds of breath.
Looking for a nice neck stretch here. Then after the next time your chin draws over towards the right, come on back to center, lift your gaze back up. Pause. In each moment of pause, you receive the opportunity to check in, to notice, to observe. Come back to your breath to make sure that you are feeling good here. When you're ready, make your way into tabletop pose. You'll want your knees under your hips. And you'll want your wrist creases beneath your shoulders. If you're feeling a little bit of pressure in your wrist, you can walk your wrist creases a bit further forward of your shoulders. You also have the option to come up on fists. Or you, if you want a little stretch in the wrist, turn your fingers back so the eyes of your wrist face forward. And we're going to do this cat cow a little differently. Before we move, check in with the knees. Make sure that the knees are feeling okay here too. If not, you can slide up your blanket beneath your knees. When you're ready, we'll do cat cow again with a little variation. So as you inhale, drop your belly slightly, lift your tailbone and heart, but gaze down at the earth. So typically we gaze up, but gaze down. And as you exhale, drop the tailbone, round your shoulders and try to look up. It's just going to be a little bit of a look up. It's not going to be much. And we'll continue. So inhale, belly drops, tailbone, heart lifts, gaze goes down. Exhale, tailbone drops, shoulders round, try to look up. So continue with this funky variation of cat-cow to the rhythm of your own breath. So this variation of cat-cow we're doing something called nerve flossing. So when we nerve floss, we're helping to stimulate the nerves in this pose along the spinal cord. And by doing this, by moving the nerves in a different way, you are helping to ease and calm those nerves a bit. This is also a great way to target the central nervous system. It's located throughout the tube of your spinal cord extends from your brain stem down to your low back. Slowly, after your next round of funky cat, next time you round your shoulders, come back to neutral. And take a moment to sit back on your heels and roll a bit through your wrists. A couple times each direction. And then come back forward to tabletop and extend your right leg back with your toes tucked under. Start to pulse forward and back a few times on that leg. You start to feel a nice stretch at the back of the leg. And come back to center and lift your right toes up just enough so that you can bring them over towards the left side of your mat with your legs straight, toes tucked under. Take a peek over your left shoulder towards your right toes. So you start to feel stretch along the right side of your body. Next inhale, come on back to center. And then in whatever way works best, bring your right foot out towards the right. Again, with the legs straight, your toes can be pointed towards the front of your mat or they can be pointed out in the same direction of your leg. Engage the lowest band of your core 
Walk your hands back to come up to stand on that left knee and the right foot for gate pose. Take your right hand to your right leg. As you inhale, stretch your left arm up and over towards the right leg. Nice side stretch. Check in with the ribs, the torso. Make sure you're not collapsing forward. See if you can lift out through your left side waist as you stretch. Next inhale, come back to center. And we'll switch to the other side. So bring your left hand down. This is where your books or your black might come in handy. Left hand down, right arm stretches up and over to the other side. And then inhale, slowly come back up. Make your way back down onto hands and knees. So whatever way makes most sense for you to come back to your tabletop. As you inhale, stretch your right arm up towards the sky. Exhale, thread it under. We're going to do this two more times. Inhale, stretch the right arm up towards the sky. Exhale, start the thread, right arm underneath left. One more inhale, arm stretches up. This time as you exhale, thread your right arm down beneath your left and come down onto your right cheek, right shoulder. The option to keep your left hand where it is. You can extend it out towards the top of your mat or you can wrap it around your low back to deepen the twist. If your head doesn't quite make it to the earth, you can always grab a blanket or a block and place it beneath your head. Next, inhale, slowly lift up. Stretch your right arm towards the sky once more. And exhale, release the right hand down. We'll do it all on the other side. So the left leg, it will extend back this time. Toes tucked under on the earth. Start to pulse forward and back on that leg. And then lift the left toes once more. Swing them over towards the right side of your mat. They might even come off. The leg straight, toes still tucked under. And then take a peek over your right shoulder towards your left toes. Start to feel the left side of your body open up. As you inhale, lift the left leg back towards center and then swing it out towards the left side of your mat to come into gate pose. So again, toes can be turned toward the front or they can turn out in the same direction of your leg. Cat paw your hands back as you come to stand on your right knee, left foot. Bring your left hand towards your left thigh. On an inhale, stretch your right arm up and overhead towards your left leg. Nice side stretch. Inhale, come back up. This time the right hand comes to the earth again. Those blocks or books might be handy here. And the left arm will stretch up overhead. Your inhale, come back up. Make your way back into your neutral tabletop. Keep your right hand where it is. On your inhale, stretch your left arm up towards the sky. As you exhale, start that thread beneath your right arm. Let's do this twice more. Inhale, stretch the left arm high. Exhale, thread it under. One more time. Inhale, stretch the left arm high. On this exhale, go ahead, thread it all the way under. Left cheek, left shoulder rests to the floor. Option to fill the gap if your head, your cheek doesn't quite make it to the earth. And take a similar shape that you did previously. And then inhale, lift on out. Left arm stretches high once again. And exhale, left hand comes down back to your neutral tabletop take a couple more rounds of cat cow either the traditional 
cat cow or that funky variation if you like that. And then come back to neutral. Draw your toes together, knees wide, and sink your hips back towards your heels for child's pose, balasana. Notice how does your body feel? And what does the sky of your mind look like? And your inhale, come back to your neutral tabletop. Tuck your toes under. And shift your hips up and back for downward facing dog. Once you're in down dog, bend your knees a lot. Lift your heels. They do not need to be touching the earth. You can even walk your heels in slightly. You feel like your core is doing a lot of the work here. Bend your knees, lift your heels, and see if you can press your chest back towards your thighs as you straighten and press through the, your arms and your hands. Make sure your fingers are spread really wide. And on your inhale, shift forward to plank pose. Exhale, gently lower your knees. And then lower all the way down onto your belly. Once you're on your belly, you can even pad just like a small fold of your blanket underneath the crests of your hips for this next pose. Make your way into Sphinx pose. So your elbows will be beneath your shoulders or slightly forward of the shoulders. Your arms will make the number 11 shape. Fingers are spread wide, palms press into the earth. We're going to do a little bit more nerve flossing here. This one is going to target your femoral nerve. So this is a nerve that runs along the front of your hip. So, on your inhale, lift your right leg up off the ground any amount you can and gaze up towards the sky exhale lower your right leg tuck your chin look down at the earth inhale lift the left leg off the earth any amount gaze goes up exhale lower the left leg tuck your chin look down at the earth we'll alternate inhale right leg lifts gaze goes up Exhale, right leg lowers, gaze goes down. Inhale, left leg lifts, gaze goes up. Exhale, left leg lowers, gaze goes down. Take this a few more times on your own, the rhythm of your own breath. Try to find this easy range of motion to help to target and rejuvenate the femoral nerve. So this nerve is important for the health of your mid to lower back and the front of your hip. Something that gets easily damaged or strained when sitting a lot. After that next time you lift and lower the left leg, come back to center, release your elbows out to the sides and make a stack with your hands, one on top of the other, and rest your forehead down to your hands. Opportunity to pause, to observe. And then as you inhale, gently lift your head up. Slide your hands beneath your shoulders. Make sure the tops of your feet rest to the floor so your toes are untucked. Come into three rounds of baby cobra. On an inhale, press 
into your hands slightly. Broaden through your collarbones as you lift your heart up. Exhale, fold. We're going to do that twice more. Inhale, lift up, baby cobra. Exhale, fold. One more. Inhale, lift up. And then exhale, fold. This time, as you inhale, make your way up to your neutral tabletop. And then come back to downward facing dog when you are ready. We won't hold this long. So on your next exhale, come into a forward fold. So you can walk your feet forward. You can walk your hands back. Or you can move in a combination of the two. And once you're in your fold... Allow your knees to take a generous bend. Allow your arms, your torso to dangle. On your inhale, next inhale, bring your hands to your shins or your thighs. Find length through your spine, so a nice lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift, lengthen halfway up. Exhale, fold. One more round. Inhale, lift, lengthen. And exhale, fold. On this inhale, slowly roll up to stand. Once you're standing, reach both arms up over your head. As you exhale, bring your palms together down through your heart and by your sides to come into Tadasana. Mountain pose. John Kabat Zinn, a very famous mindfulness and meditation teacher, reminds us that you can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to swim. So you can't stop what's coming, what's happening around you. But you can learn to swim and to move through whatever arises in your life, whatever arises in your practice. Just remember that sweet little tidbit for the remainder of our practice together. On your inhale, reach both arms up over your head. As you exhale, bend your knees, hinge forward into a forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway, fine length. Exhale, fold back in. On your inhale, come all the way up to stand. Stretch both arms up overhead. And exhale, hands come through to your heart. Down by your sides, Tadasana. Inhale, arms stretch up overhead. Exhale, bend your knees, fold forward and down. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, stretch all the way up to stand, both arms up overhead. Exhale, palms through your heart, down by your side, Tadasana. One last round, inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold back in. Inhale, come up to strand, stretch both arms up over your head. And exhale, palms through to your heart, down by your sides, Tadasana. Check in, notice. And on your inhale, stretch both arms up once more. Grab opposite elbows. And start to flow from side to side. So inhale and center. And exhale. F- slide over towards your left. Stretch over towards your left. Inhale, center. Exhale, stretch over towards your right. Continue just like that a few more times. Nice flowing side stretch.
then come on back to center release your arms down by your side let's take a nice deep inhale through your nose exhale open your mouth let out a sigh And then on your next inhale, stretch your right arm out in front of you and turn your palm up towards the sky. Start to turn your fingers down towards the earth so your palm is facing forward. Take your left fingers to your right fingers and kind of wrap them around there. Start to pull back. Press through the heel of your hand you pull down with your left fingers try to keep your arm shoulder level shoulder height release flip your right palm down this time fingers point down so now your palm is facing back towards you grab your left fingers to your right fingers again and then press through this time the top of your wrist so you get a stretch in the opposite direction Go ahead, release. We'll switch sides. This time, left arm extends out. Fingers turn down. Right fingers come to the left. Palm faces forward. Press down through your fingers as you press out through the heel of your hand. And then we'll switch. So left palm faces down. Fingers point down, so your palm now faces you. Right fingers come to the left and press through the top part of your wrist. Go ahead, release. Take some rolls through your wrists a couple times each direction. And then make your way to the middle of your mat and turn to the side. Once you're there, step your feet wide, arms come out into a T, and see if you can get your wrists above your ankles, ankles beneath wrists. Release your arms down for a minute. I know my arms get tired. We'll set up for warrior two. So the right toes will turn towards the short edge of your mat, and your left foot will stay parallel to the short edge of your mat, but turn the toes just slightly inward, just like a smidge check in that your right heel is perpendicular with the arch of your left foot once you got that going take a nice deep bend into your right knee look down at your right knee you want to make sure that the knee is tracking out towards your pinky toe if you find that it's falling inward don't want that so actually go ahead take your hand and press it out towards the pinky toe and keep pressing through your hand and resist through your knee so you find that traction find that strength bend and straighten your knee as much as needed now that you're there extend your arms out into a t and turn your palms to face forward towards the long edge of your mat take your right fingers back so that your palm faces the front of your mat and bring your left fingers forward and lean your head to the right inhale come up And this time, the left fingers, we're going to point back. Your right fingers point forward as you lean your head towards the left. Inhale back center. Exhale, right fingers back, left fingers forward. Head comes to the right. Inhale center. Exhale, left fingers back, right fingers forward as you lean your head to the left. Inhale center. Exhale, right fingers back, left fingers forward, lean your head to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left fingers back, right fingers forward as you lean your head to the left. And then come back to center, release your arms, straighten through the right leg. Bring your toes in. Toe, right toes turn so they are parallel to the short edge of your mat this time. And then the left toes will turn out towards the short edge of the mat. Look in left heel. It's perpendicular with the right arch. Check that left knee. 
go ahead, bend it if you haven't already. Check in with that left knee. Make sure it's tracking out towards your pinky toe. And again, throughout this pose, you can bend and straighten your knee as often as needed. Extend your arms out into a T when you're ready. So this time, we'll take the left fingers back. So palms face forward again before we go there. And then turn your left fingers back, right fingers forward, and lean your head to the left. Inhale back center. Exhale, right fingers back, left fingers forward as you lean your head to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left fingers back, right fingers forward as you lean your head to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right fingers back, left fingers forward as you lean your head to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left fingers back. Right fingers forward as you lean your head to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right fingers back. Left fingers forward as you lean your head to the right. And inhale, center. Go ahead, release your hands back to your hips. And walk your, f turn your left toes back forward and walk your feet in. Pause for a moment in mountain pose. So that funky thing we were doing with our hands in Warrior Two is another form of nerve flossing. That variation targeted the, your median nerve, which is the most commonly irritated nerve in your hands and arms. So pressure and tension on this nerve is what causes the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. So this, that movement is really helpful for that condition, for carpal tunnel and for other forms of wrist pain. So find your strap, whatever it is you're using today, and bring your feet back out wide. Similar distance as before. Toes turn slightly inward. And this time, we'll bind our hands behind our low back. So this is where the strap might come in handy. If your hands don't reach, no worries. This is where that prop comes in. So either bind both hands to the prop to create a fist, or bring your hands together to create a fist. As you inhale, draw this fist down and away from you. Heart lifts, collarbones, chest expand. Stay here or fold on forward and stretch your arms up overhead. Breathe here. On your next inhale, engage your core and your pelvic floor muscles. Slowly come back up to stand. Release your fist. Release your strap. Step your feet back together. And then come back to the top of your mat. Stand tall into Dasana pose. Back to that pause. Come back to that stillness. Now into Dasana, feet hips width distance, maybe a little wider, if that's more comfortable. Stretch both arms up towards the sky. So as you inhale, reach your left arm way up as if you were trying to get something down from a high shelf. And then bend your right knee and hike your right hip up. Exhale, release, keep your both of your arms lifted. Inhale, reach your right arm way up. Again, as if you're trying to reach something off a high shelf. Bend your left knee and hike your left hip up. And then release. We'll switch between the two sides. So inhale, reach your left arm way up. Bend your right knee, right your, hike your right hip up. Woo, say that five times fast. And release. Then inhale, right arm reaches up. Bend your left knee, hike your left hip up. And exhale, release. Let's do it twice more each side. So inhale, left arm reaches high, right knee bends, hike the right hip up. Exhale, release. Inhale, right arm reaches up, left knee bends, hike the left hip up. Exhale, release. One more each side. Inhale, left arm stretches up, right knee bends, right hip hikes high. 
Exhale, release. Inhale, right arm stretches up. Left knee bends. Left hip, hip hikes up. Woo. And then exhale, release. Release your arms down by your side. And take a moment to check in. So that funky little movement helps to stretch your quadratus lumborum, which is your deepest abdominal muscle found in your lower back. It's between the top of your pelvis and your lowest rib. So this muscle helps to provide good posture and stabilize your spine when you bend to the side or extend your low back. I know this, for me, can be a muscle that often gets a lot of tension, especially from sitting a lot. If I do just do something funky with my body. When you're ready, make your way down onto your seat with your knees bent, feet on the floor. Bring the soles of your feet together. Knees come out wide for butterfly pose. The further your feet are away from your inner thighs, the less intense this will be on your hips. The closer the feet are, the more intense it will be. You choose what feels best in your body. Extend your arms out into a T. And cross your right arm underneath your left. You can grab opposite elbows. You can bring the backs of your hands together. Or you can bring your palms together for eagle arms. As you inhale, stretch your elbows up. And as you exhale, round in. Draw your elbows down towards your belly button. Allow your gaze to drop. Inhale, star to lift on out. Exhale, extend your arms back to a T. And we'll switch. So this time, left arm comes under right. Same options. Grab shoulders, backs the hands come together, or palms come to touch. So you inhale, lift your elbows up and away. And as you exhale, round down. Draw your elbows towards your belly button as your gaze comes down. Next inhale, slowly lift on out. Extend your arms out into a T. And then release your hands down. Bring one hand outside of each knee. And gently draw your knees back together. Scoot your way to the middle of your mat. Keep your knees bent, feet to the floor. Your feet can be hips width distance together or wider. Wrap your right arm around your knees. And stretch your left hand back behind you as you twist open towards the left. Inhale, find length through your spine. Exhale, deepen the twist. One more. Inhale, find length. And exhale, deepen. Inhale, come back to center. We'll switch the grip of the arm so the left arm comes around the knees. Take an inhale here. Exhale, right hand comes behind as you take your twist. Inhale, find length. Exhale, deepen. One more. Inhale, find length. And exhale, deepen. Inhale, come back to center. And as you exhale, gently make your way down onto your back. Once there, hug your knees into your chest. You can take that time to move, to feel good, to explore. This little circles on your low back. Gently rock from right to left. And we'll set up for happy baby pose. So the knees will come out wide towards the sides of your torso. Knees will bend, feet face up towards the sky. Grab hold of any part of your leg, ankle, or foot as you come into this pose. Feel free to stay still here, but it might feel really nice to move. Again, find those rocks from side to side. You can extend one leg as you draw the opposite foot closer in and then switch. That might feel pretty nice. Take time to explore. Imagine you are this happy baby. <laughs> And babies 
one of the best things that they do, one of the things they know how to best do is to feel good. That's really all that they care about is getting their needs met and feeling good. Let's come back to that state of mind. And then go ahead, inhale, draw your knees back to center, back to the chest. And we'll give the knees a nice big hug. It's like you're giving your whole body a good old squeeze. And take a moment to thank yourself for making time for this practice at home. Thank your body for all that it does for you day in and day out. On your inhale, give your body, your knees, your legs one last final squeeze. And exhale with a sigh as you come down into your final Shavasana. Take any time you might need to get settled in here. Just as I mentioned at the beginning, yoga is not about touching your toes about what you learn on the way down. Once you're in your final Shavasana, that final pose of deep breath, take a moment to connect and tune in. Notice what you may have learned throughout this practice about yourself, about your body, about the inner workings of your mind, about your emotions. And check back in with the mind. Check back in with your sky. Notice the weather patterns. And again, try to see and visualize these thoughts that come through your mind. It happens with all of us. They just kind of come through. We can't really stop them. Try to visualize these thoughts as the clouds in the sky. And see if you can allow these thoughts to clear as the clouds move across the width of your sky. So you can get to a nice, clear, bright, sunny sky. Or maybe you turn this more into a dark sky as you come into Shavasana. You can bring in the vision of the night sky. Maybe a few stars come out. Maybe you can see your favorite phase of the moon. Try to get a nice, clear sky so you can really see those stars. You can see that moon as you rest here in your final Shavasana pose that is so vital, so important to our physical practice, not only offers a time of svadhyaya or self-study, but also allows the body to fully integrate, utilize all of the incredible movement that it made its way through in our practice together.
slowly begin to deepen your breath as you come back to your physical body maybe start by wiggling through your fingers through your toes roll through your wrists through your ankles stretch your arms up over your head You can draw your knees into your chest and feel those little rocks come back to your body. In your own time, you can make your way over onto either your right or your left side. Take a moment to pause there. And when you're feeling ready, you can come up into a comfortable seat. Once seated, draw your hands into prayer in front of your heart. Bow your chin down towards your chest, sealing in this practice. Remember, in life... You can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to swim. Thank you all for joining me in practice today. The light in me honors and bows to the light that shines from within each and every one of you. Namaste. Thank you all very much. My heart, my love goes out to you and the people that you love. Sending you lots of well wishes for good health, for peace, for serenity during these times. Hope to see you all soon. Thank you for allowing me to guide you.